Hi, Steve Gilmore, Gilmore Gang. It's Friday. It's uh, January. It's 2013. And uh, we've got uh, Scoble, Marx, and Tashek. So, uh, welcome, uh, Robert Scoble. Yo! <laughs> What's up? Uh, I thought you'd be coming from the Museum of Sex or something. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got on Facebook for the first time in a long time. That's all I saw. Yeah, well, that's somebody liked a photo from last June when we were in New York at the museum. Oh, that's what happened? Yeah. yeah that, that was important. Uh, welcome, John Tajek. Thanks for your random sex comments. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be a slow day. <laughs> or not. And the chuckle is from uh, Kevin Marks. Welcome. Hi <laughs> there. In your garden. In my garden, In which garden. is which is fenced, not walled. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, I see Scoble's already uh, laid out what the show's about. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just give it a possibility, you know. All right, well, just you know, take yeah. your shot. Well, Twitter came out with this new uh, Vine app, which uh, lets you uh, film. It's sort of like an Instagram for video, so it lets you film very short little video clips. Yeah, let's see if I can get down to one and see if it'll play. Very short, because they killed it, right? Yeah. Well, no. It's, uh, it's you know, it's buggy. So, uh, no, here we go. Didn't, didn't Facebook kill uh, access to... Uh... They did kill access to the graph, yes. Yeah. So, but from, the, uh, from the Vine. app still... oh, So, they killed Vine's access to the graph. The, or yes. everyone's. <laughs> what well, you guys they... are talking about there is there, there was a friend input. Uh, 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 an ability to bring friends in. Let me see if I can pull it up. So, yeah, here they have this page. So you can go to Twitter and bring your friends in. Let's see if I find any, if it finds any new friends. And then you can go to Facebook, but Facebook says you are not an authorized face to use Facebook. So uh, Facebook turned it off. Um, yeah, like they did to Apple and like they did to Google and yeah, it's like it's not like yeah. this. Is yeah, this like is they did from Facebook. Remember when they kicked me off for uh, you yep. know doing that <laughs> to pla with a Plaxo script? You know they kicked me off uh, what in two thousand seven. So they've been pretty consistent about this. You you're not allowed to steal the social graph out of Facebook and put it on a competitor product. Well, so they've, competitor they've different, product they've made is, different excuses over the years. The, the, but, what a competitor product is, is is the issue. Well, they've just they've just redefined their terms. Um, and they um, it says, blah, 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 replicating core functionality, you may not use Facebook platform to promote or to expel user data to a product or service that replicates a core Facebook product or service without our permission. Note they haven't defined core product, as far as I can tell. Or their permission. So, <laughs> but Vine is not a part of a core Facebook functionality, right? Vine no, is a six-second Instagram for videos. Or... Vine is done by Twitter, and that's well, they... what... So right. anything Twitter does is a well, it's like it was, it was, it was like Google Friend Connect. It was like when you know, oh, Google did it. Therefore, we will find a way to reject this. Yeah, they also did the same. Yeah, they they cut Google off. They did the same thing to Boxer. Facebook did. They they blocked Boxer. Um, yeah, and I I bet they're going to do it. This goes all the way back to when I ran that script. I wanted to get my social graph out of Facebook and put it back into Google, and they didn't let me do that. And made it very clear that they were never going to let me do that. So, and uh, yeah, I think there's more interesting things to you talk. Get what about. you pay for. Yeah, it's it's a it's a roach motel. The data goes in, but it's not allowed to go out. I mean, what what was I I, I mean I mean we had big arguments about it on Gilmore Gang. What back in 2007 or when, whenever that I got kicked off. And um, yeah, because you were wrong then, and you're wrong now. <laughs> No. no. Yeah, that's the Arrington's famous line. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to take my data back out of Facebook, and they didn't want to let me. And that was that, that's uh, the crux of the problem. Um, what was ironic was they did the same thing to, to Google, right? They took all the data off of my Google contacts and put it into Facebook. Oh yeah. And I wanted to take it back the other way and put it back into Google's uh, contacts. Which they have some syncing now going on, but not. Well, I think where they were wrong was putting uh, reinstating you. Uh, with, for no reason. <laughs> Seriously, I thought that was it made no sense whatsoever. 
Yeah, well, you, you, you know. basically stole all this data from them. And uh, and they said, oh. It's my data. Nice job. It's what do you mean? It's, if it's your data, then why did you give it to them in the first place? Because I, cause I like Facebook. I, I like exactly. the other pieces of Facebook, right? Not the email addresses and the, and the names. I like I like uh, the news feed. Well, yeah, I like all I these free services. I just don't want to have to, uh, you know, give them anything that they want. Yeah, well, is that what I, you're saying? I've given up on that one. I give I give lots of data to all these things. So. That's right. You have. That's, given yeah, up. I mean, this is a you know a, a worrying issue because with you know it was something that I was at the Aaron Schwartz Morrow last night talking about the criminalization of downloading um, and the fact that by Downloading more than you know, more than the assumed number of things that you're that you're allowed to download. He was given you know 13 felonies, and this is this is this is on a, on the same line with that. You used to be able to crawl Facebook. You used to be able to go and fetch data from the from the public pages and um, link them together and make sense of them. Now, if you try and do that do that with a um, you know directly, they will give you a you're not using a browser error message. You used to be able to call, crawl Twitter. Now chunks of that disappear behind. You must log in to see this data um, walls. Um, so there is this, there is this sort of a, um, assault on the the sort of core fabric of the web here, where they're saying you cannot have access to data that is publicly visible on the web with a core web browser if you're trying to do web. something else. This, you know, this, they're talking about core functionality. I'm talking about core functionality of the web, which is when I link to something, I can fetch it with a with a browser of my choice. Is the uh, core foundation uh, fabric of the web? Is that a copyrighted phrase? <laughs> I should I should register the domain now. Yes. Too late. Okay. What else? <laughs> uh, Facebook comments gone from uh, TechCrunch. Uh, yeah, I wrote a few thousand words on that. What I, what, what do they say? I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't like comment. the comments anymore. <laughs> I mean, let's just, <coughs> let, let me. Let did me you go. did you write them in a TechCrunch comment? I, I did I did some there I did some in Quora I did some on Facebook you know just all over the place so let's see uh, let's go to a recent one see what the yeah, comments look like this means that I wouldn't have anything on my Facebook um, timeline at all because anything yeah. I, I have had there well, were TechCrunch comments the the problem is and here's the problem that a lot of articles on TechCrunch are getting no comments at all and they're looking at um, you know the Verge which has hundreds of comments on each article. It's not quite really fair to compare TechCrunch to The Verge, and but I, I can get it. The editors are being pressured to make more engagement happen on the pages. So one thinking is that uh, uh, because the Facebook comments came around, um, the the quantity of comments has gone way down. The quality went way up, but the quantity went way down. And so they want more quantity. So they said, well, let's get rid of Facebook and go back to a third party commenting engine, in this case, Livefire, uh, which does have some advantages. One, you don't have to have a Facebook account. You didn't really have to have a Facebook account, but now you can sign in with a Twitter account or a Yahoo account. account. Or a Do you Yahoo have to authenticate? Uh, well, you have to sign in with a password. Uh, you know, you have to, you have to uh, set up an account. Now, it's a lot easier to set up a, an, an anonymous account. Uh, on Live Fire than it is on Facebook. On Facebook, you either sign in with your Facebook account, which everybody knows who you are, and there's strong identity, which is why the quality of the comments was so strong. Yeah, well, let's or get rid of that in, quality problem. Or you go in through <laughs> Yahoo. Uh, you could go in through Yahoo on the old commenting system. Um, uh, but then you look weird, first of all, because you look <laughs> different than everybody else who's on Facebook, and second of all, everybody knows that Yahoo was spammers. You know, because every time I saw a Yahoo comment, it would be a troll or a spammer, and so it made you look even weirder over time. If it, and now only we could have filters to take all those people out of the uh, feed. Well, I, ma I managed to comment on Crunch that. could you know serve that all those people, uh, you know, for all the people that like to have spam. Yeah, you know, um, on one side, the, the comments got very noisy and lower quality. And there's a whole lot of reasons. I put a whole post up on Quora about why that is, why why people, uh, well, even me, I'm more willing now to be a little noisier with my comments and post, you know, just uh, great post kind of comments, right? In the Facebook world, when it was tied to my Facebook page, I wasn't willing to do that. I w wanted to put a little bit more 
a depth because I knew it would go to 470,000 people on Facebook. And uh, I, I didn't want to spam the crap out of my 470,000 people. So I put more effort into it. There was also social proof. I, I could see, go through the list and I could see who was popular on Facebook, which is some sort of social proof. And that's gone from this thing. Um, there was real names because Facebook's uh, system forces real names. Right now, I mean, I'm just looking at one of these comments. Who the hell is Quan Solo? I don't know, you know. And and, and I really, JJ Abrams. I, yeah, I really don't like not knowing real names because I want to go and and use that real name to find you on. If you're interesting and you're posting a really great comment, which is the whole co point on this, I want to go to you know LinkedIn and Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook and and follow you there and this this naming system just makes that very very difficult to do where in the old world I could just go subscribe 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 and follow people who were making interesting points and it was a lot easier um, on the other hand there are some advantages to this like like I said the, you you can be anonymous on this new system uh, it, it has a scroll system so if you're on this page and somebody posts a new comment it scrolls automatically it doesn't you don't have to refresh the page, which makes sense for Robert, us. Can you just abstract it out? I mean, is it? I mean, do comments matter? I, I mean, I they, use they matter a to lot, the media. Man. I mean, but I, do they matter to people? Yes. If they didn't matter, I, you know, why was there 900 comments on the on the post where they switched the comments? Yeah. Yeah, but what was the post about comments? Where, what was the comments you know, going to cover? Them, you know, like it's like agree, blogging about blogging. Yeah, let's let in the hordes, and then they're all going to comment. What's that? All those people who have been un, uh, frozen out of TechCrunch for the last X years, uh, you know, suddenly were unleashed on this. Yeah. And probably the same amount of value. Yeah. Right. What so, did Facebook get from having the comments, you know, on TechCrunch? Well, uh, they had just they, launched uh, the Facebook comment system, and uh, you know, I, I, as a matter of fact, they, they this was my fault. Line. I did this. Uh, I. I ran a uh, what is your real name campaign uh, for a few days and just pissed off a whole lot of the, the, uh, the trolls. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. The, the Twitter app on Facebook has just started working again. I just went to my timeline and it's full of um, my retweets. It's set to just viewable by me. That hasn't worked for months. Hmm. Really? Hmm. I personally I block media. all tweets on Facebook, so... Um, by the way, I, we should talk about edge rank because if you tweet an item into Facebook, it'll get very, very few likes or comments. Take the same thing, copy and paste it into Facebook, and you'll get uh, 10 to 50 times more comments and likes. That's because they're blocked by people like you. Uh, that's part of it, um, and that's a big part of it because we've signaled to the engine that uh, tweets are lower quality uh, on, on Facebook. But I bet they have also put a little anti-weight on tweets because they don't want you to go over to Twitter. But they look ugly. I, I'll be I'll be honest. I, well, that's the translation yes, problem. It's I mean, the optics. Well, it's not just the optics. It's, it's the translation of the of the metaphors between them. The problem is if you if you at someone on Twitter, mapping that to a Facebook ID is is messy precisely because you can't um, crawl both graphs. Yeah. So you, you'd have to build an app that logs into both and then understand what both are. Um, we, have the, we have the same issue with um, Instagram. Instagram does some odd things now because they assume that any at you type on Instagram um, is a reference to an Instagram account. Um, and then they'll remap that to the Twitter account when they re replicate it out to Twitter. But if you're using Instagram and in your brain you're thinking of someone's Twitter account, um, it can get remapped to somebody else. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that can be really confusing. You think, what, what do they do there? Um, and then they only do that if, they, if, they have, if that person has accounts on both and they can... You know, qualify the mapping. They're, they're trying to do it right, but it's still very confusing for the user who assumes that the app is a, is a Twitter thing. So this, you know, there's there's a sort of deep and messy problem of identification, identity mapping here that's going to get um, going to continue. And you know, the we, it's been sort of in cold storage for a few years because we were just using Facebook for it. Now Facebook has said, "Screw everybody else. You're not allowed to use our graph anymore. We're going to have to come to terms with how we make this stuff work work better." Um, and we, we're gonna, these issues are going to surface more and more. Yep. Who, uh, yes is what you said? Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. And no, John, I, you, you know, said nothing, right? That's not what I was going to agree with. Excellent. I, 
I mean, I I'm don't... just screwing my head back together here. That's, yeah, um, that's what I, was yeah, I think uh, it, it's t totally uh, Twitter when you when you tweet something into Facebook, or if it comes from another source, it not only looks worse, and it's probably weighted less. It just doesn't have any of the context. It doesn't have any of the at mentions. You know, the at mentions don't have any anything to do with Facebook. You can't. As far as unless you maybe somebody hasn't figured out how to embed a code to add add a friend you know or tag a friend yeah. on a Facebook, it just doesn't. I mean, it just doesn't look right. I think this is but a if you take that same bonus issue. No, data, that's part. That that's why, why, why don't we call people? Why don't we call Colin Powell General Colin, Colin Powell? Does that map over? Do people on Twitter understand that he's a general, and people on? Uh, Facebook yeah, I, don't know I, what that means. Steve, it's ridiculous. I, I think this is only part of the problem. The other part of the problem is the use case of, of Twitter. The usage model is different than on Facebook. On Twitter, we would have back and forth conversation, uh, and those back and forth conversations, when they come over to Facebook, don't make any sense. Because if if you know yeah. if you make a point, then I respond to it with yeah. But they don't make any sense on Twitter to begin with. It doesn't matter. No, they do because I can see I can see your at reply through back and some forth. tortured uh, you know. Uh, I can't get my uh, Twitter client to work anymore. I, and, uh, I sort and of agree with you there. Take place Steve, on Facebook. What's what? that? What John? The discussion. You can view the discussion on Twitter. You can see the you know the history of the. Yeah, of the but, thread. But, but the thing is, and but you the can't thread do that on Facebook because it's like one item. You can item perform in the, in the, archaeological in timeline as opposed to the discussion. Yeah, you, it's, it's, you can it's, go it's, back it's and figure of... it out. But you know, I mean, how how much uh, archaeology do you need in order to understand what you know? If somebody responds with something that's completely out of left field, uh, you know, it, it takes a couple of clicks to figure it out on either network. Uh, yes, but when when you, because you they can't have even find it on on can't map them. you can't even find it on Facebook. Find what? Uh, any kind of context. Can you what use the uh, social graph and just say, "Show me all the tweets from this person"? Does that work? Ah, social graph search. There we go. Yeah. Then no, I haven't got it. I don't have it either. Seems like everyone else I know, except for you, has it though. Go ahead, Kevin. Um. So. The, the, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a problem of one of the re reasons this mapping is hard is because they're structured differently because the Facebook is post with comments and the Twitter is series of posts. And so when you try and migrate those back and forth, they, 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 that does go awry. Um, and, you know, the, the, people have done work at making this work. Ironically, um, you know, FriendFeed was actually fairly good at this because those guys sat down and, and spent some time making, making the migration go back and forth. But then they got bought by Facebook and um, put it into, into, you know, maintenance mode so that this but this is something that you know this is something we see a lot um when you're doing social media monitoring you use you're using tools to keep track of people talking to you through different channels and you've got to reply back to them in a way that makes sense within that channel but but keep track of the conversation you know, for yourself as well it's, it, this is not a this is something that's going to you know, get more and more complex over time which, which gets us back to this twitter vine thing this new video app that doesn't go into facebook at all right <laughs> And so uh, now we're going to see a whole uh, slew of these kinds of apps. Uh, Snapchat is sort of a, another permutation of these video apps that, that uh, you know, if I send you a Snapchat, only you can view it and it doesn't stick around anywhere. Uh, Facebook Poke is a copy of that, which I like better, by the way. But um, And now Twitter Vine gives you a cross between that style of temporary uh, low friction video communication with um, uh, with Instagram style publicness, and um, I, I find it interesting. I think there's going to be a lot more of these things coming on mobile, and they're all going to be little walled gardens. And that that video is not going anywhere else. And Google will do one, and that video won't go to Twitter very easily. You'll have to figure out how to link to it or well, no, share, I mean, share Google a have URL. You will have one, but it Google goes to YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, and then yeah, got, but the, YouTube they got some very nice YouTube ads. YouTube is too heavyweight. I'm not going to do. Uh, a YouTube video where I just want to show you a cute little so video of my YouTube kid video. doing doing something stupid. That's no, why I'm using these new kinds of apps. Flickr actually has this thing YouTube called 90 iPhone. second video. Hang on. I do. One at a time. One at a time. And uh, that was years ago. And I, I, I don't think anyone actually used it, but um, but they had it. Yeah. And th yeah, that was 120 seconds. Um, whereas this is six seconds and. It plays muted by default, so it's it's really trying to displace animated gifs. I think. 
Well, there's real a, people. There's a mission in life. No, I, I think there's some <laughs> things in life that are very lightweight. You, you know, kid blowing out the birthday candles. Why do I need a 15 minute video of that? No, just put up a little seven second video and put that no, up. The, the, it's the, like the, a. They're, they're trying to impose a constraint, which is interesting, and, and it's yeah. and it, it is their response to Snapchat and, and and poke, but they're doing it in a in a twittery way, which is which is public um, and and playful. It, it, I, we, I can see why they've done it, and structurally the things that you know are quite interesting. It is it is fun making weird stop motion things, um, and they're gonna have you know they're gonna get a, a lot of play with that. Um, in some ways, it's like um, Cinemagram, um, yeah. but it's. The, but the you know the, the point is it's a different or social to... cam really it it uh, there were other lightweight video apps they just yeah, never but it's had... close but it's close to cinemagram the, the the point is it's supposed to make sense as a loop as a short thing which cinemagram yeah. is trying to do so they're trying to to get that animated gif aesthetic um, and to get people to understand that when they see these they don't it, you don't feel like I'm clicking this thing I've got to sit down and get some popcorn out and put my headphones on um, which is what you feel like when someone gives you a YouTube link um, so there's you know, it's like, oh, do I really want to do this on the train? Um, whereas these are like, well, I can click on that; it'll be okay. So there's, there's, I, I can see what they're they're, they're trying to sort of create a, a, a social structural space about this kind of video, this kind of video grammar um, that will work within their within their realm. So that that piece makes sense to me. Um, but the, yeah, again, that's going to have this the same challenge of how do you propagate this to other platforms in a way that, that's useful. The, the the right way to do it may be to post you know in, uh, to post an animated gif to uh, Google Plus or whatever because they work there. Yeah, I, you know it's it's like taking the little sports uh, the, like the six second soundbite video and then just playing it. it it's it's really good for promotion. You, you see it on uh, when they do recaps of football games or uh, anything with a fast moving sport. And uh, and if, if it's embedded in there, then you can. I, I think there's actually a, a, a pretty good business purpose for it. Um, but it does seem to me that this thing would be more uh, accessible on Facebook uh, because you know you, then you can just say, you know, birthday candles, hey mom, you know, hey, want to go out, that kind of thing, using the social graph, picking up people, and then pushing that six second video, and then just having it again. But uh, but the, with Twitter, it seems much more of a business proposition. And uh, I think that there's going to be a, the, the constraint actually uh, works in its favor. Well, it's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they're you know, they're giving us the, the the idea is they're trying to make video not a not a big deal, but just part of the flow. And uh, you know, obviously the the second stage of that is then you have little six six second promotional clips in there as well. But they 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 they're also going to try and social engineer whoever makes those to say okay, you can make a coke commercial if you want, but it's got to be six second and people are actually going to want to want to share it. Now so you're it, saying that it it has to play it it when you're when you go into the client it 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 automatically plays like an animated gif would. That's what that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing with the embedded ones. Yeah. Well, so so that I mean to me that's a problem. Um, that means that you're you're going to be interrupted by promoted ads. You know, it's going to be just annoying <laughs> to 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 you to have something that's pushed to you that you can't stop. The thing that it reminds me of is the the newspapers in Harry Potter, where they've got these little videos of people moving inside the newspaper. I think that they're going for that effect as well, um, which is you know. Like years, you know, 20 years ago when we were inventing video for computers, we had this assumption that videos would be little pieces that were parts of the page that you could play with. Um, and we, you know, we built that, but people didn't end up using it that way. Huh. <laughs> yeah, we, you just need, we need an app for that too. The yeah. Facebook airplanes just flew over. <laughs> yeah, they've got, so, they're doing anyways, airplanes without, uh, without pilots, by the way. Yeah, there's going to be more of these little lightweight video apps. Uh, it just makes a lot of sense, and you know, people will learn from Twitter. We've had them. It's just that we've never had a big company like a Twitter or Facebook behind them before. So, well, I think that these. Uh, uh, I think what's interesting about all this is is the the stuff that users come up with in the cracks between all of these so-called ugly, uh, you know, messages on the wrong format. In a different platform, uh, you know, the platform is your computer. It's not these individual apps. Okay. I mean, well, set, we all we, we don't just we don't just avoid Twitter because uh, we like Facebook and vice versa. No, 
And even, by the way, Zuckerberg got, I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago, and he, he said he doesn't look at Google Plus or Twitter as, as competitors anymore, uh, other in some weird way. But he said the use cases of all of these will start uh, diverging and will become clear that you almost have to be on all of them. Yeah, as, as everybody in, uh, in the software business reaches for their wallet. Hmm. What? Not a competitor? Wait a minute. Yeah, right. I'm toast. Well, <laughs> you know, I, when Bill Gates used to say that kind of thing, you know, <laughs> boards well, of directors. Bill Gates used to say fire that, that, that guy. Meant, that meant we were about to build this into Windows, which was just you know. Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the other piece of this of this Facebook must not duplicate a core Facebook service. It's like, oh, guess what? We added a core Facebook service. You're now duplicating it. We can shun you. Yeah. You know, they, they, they are walking straight into the, you know, the stuff that Microsoft got in trouble for here. Yeah, I don't think so. I uh, think first of all, you, you have to have a monopoly to, to get in trouble. Right. They don't you have a monopoly. You can't make any claim that Facebook has a monopoly. They have, yeah. They have a monopoly in the family and friends space. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not even so sure that, that even the family and friends are... <laughs> I mean, I, you know, with with 200 million people on Twitter, I I don't, you know, there's a lot of people who are on uh, Instagram or Twi well, Instagram's Facebook now, but yeah, they could just come out in to, in their uh, 10K and say, uh, you know, the cell phone companies are are uh, a competitor. Therefore, there's no no way they can become a monopoly because it you know cell phones allow person to person or group contact. <laughs> there's no way that they can say. There's well, no, you, uh, there, there would be no precedent for it. Uh, that's yet. that's exactly right. If uh, you know any evidence is needed to this, to take a look at what uh, the DOJ did with the uh, Google uh, monopoly trial. Remember that. No, because it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, it was like two weeks ago. <laughs> it didn't yeah, happen. Well, they, it's like, they oh, had no, there's no problem. They investigation said, okay, we can't actually do anything wrong here. No, you, you have 87% market share of search, but, you know, look at Bing. I mean, you know, they probably paid for Bing. <laughs> I mean, that's what uh, uh, Microsoft did is to give, you know, throw Apple a bone. Kind of backfired on them, but it took about <laughs> 10 years. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of, of backfiring, so there's a lot of noise about uh, the Apple stock uh, going in the toilet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, this isn't a stock show because who the hell knows what's going to happen in the stock market. But uh, it certainly does reflect um, concern about the fact that uh, Apple is only uh, making two thirds of the revenue. <laughs> on the on the planet, I, yeah. But stock stock investors invest in in futures, and you know, Apple. Yes, Apple's making a shitload of money. So is Microsoft, and Microsoft has been flat for a decade, even though their profits have been going up like this. Um, that's the stock market is about. Are you going to do something shocking to us tomorrow, and bring out something that gets us all hot and bothered in a new way? And you I, don't think that, that Apple's going to do that? I uh, I think there are some serious cracks coming out of out of Apple uh, that the investors are keying in on. Yes. No, yeah. you mean no? N uh, no, Apple is not going to do that tomorrow. It's something shocking. Really, really. And, uh, and who I'm is? I'm hearing that. I'm hearing that from a lot of different. You're going to get your Google glasses and your Google car and Google your... glasses is a good example. Google glasses is is What's good futuristic. About it? Futuristic. It gives us a dream. It, it shows that somebody's coming up with something new and trying to do something different. Those market um, projections are not about uh, about future projections. They're about uh, future projections of growth. I mean, you know, Apple in the well, I think a, you know, a year ago Google, was 118 Apple's, percent Apple's up. Growth is flattening out though, and it's predictive. Uh, we know that they're going to grow at end rate, and they're going to make 20 billion dollars a quarter. Oh, so it, we know what we know what they're going to come out with in a year. A year's too far away. I, I'm seven I'm months. I'm telling you, I'm we, hearing. We, I just had somebody in my office who's a top end developer in the in the mobile space and he he you know he is he and other people who work closely with Apple are saying they don't have anything new to come out with they're not oh, they're not opening up they're getting killed on contextual software oh, you mean google and, right 
No, oh, Google you mean Apple? Com- I, I thought you meant Apple. Google. Apple is not. Google has something not, new to come out. With? Apple does not have a product pipeline inside. Why did they fire their top software guy? They have no ideas, and this because he was a dick. They have no ideas. <laughs> He's just like Sanofsky. He had no ideas about where to go in the future. Sanofsky had plenty of ideas. He, he had was, no ideas. Oh come on! He come was, on! He he was a machine. He did he great. He had no ideas. All he was good at was making the trains run on time. That's not all he was good at. Has has he launched a single feature that Apple or Google doesn't have at and Microsoft? No, because they're exactly. screwed. But that doesn't mean no, that he had no ideas. did a bad job. Had no ideas. Ah. He had you no know, idea. Just, and by the just way, look at it in context. I mean, Apple's the second most valuable company in the world. Yeah. I mean, it, their stock is where it was yeah. a year and, ago. It and, is, as of it was today, it was the first meteoric first rise. It's not like it's going to, you know, bottom out at twenty. Well, but, but that's part of the point. It's so just, part of the reason just, this is happening. It's amazing what they did. I mean, they, they just kept on going. Absolutely. And uh, all the all the. I'm not uh, saying that it's not um, amazing what they did. The stock the price has got more to do with the uh, the ineptitude of the buying public in terms of running the stock up than it has to do with any fundamentals. Oh, the Apple stock is so cheap right now in terms of uh, p- uh, price uh-huh. So this is a, is this a, a tip? Scoble's tips. We'll be no, right back. I'm you, saying you shouldn't say stock tips from, stock <laughs> from me about it. Booyah, to do with says how Scoble. How much did you get people to dream? Apple is not putting a dream in front of us. They are not telling us where Apple is going to be in a, a year that's going to be mind blowing. They didn't and, tell and, us a year ago uh, where they were going to be today. No, they didn't but tell they us two years of, ago where they were going to be a year from now. They don't tell you what they're going to do, they no, do it. Wrong. They do tell you, and Steve Jobs was in charge. He's not there anymore, and the people I know, who I know, Steve there, Jobs is dead. But the, you know, that's over. The people stated. who work there are not able to take risk the way Steve was able to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go and talk to. No, Apple, I'm sorry. Please, they are not able to get shit done right now. This is a deep problem for Apple, and they have to make us believe. And the last three product announcements did not make us dream. Made us go, man, this is like... I think the iPad Mini is the best product that they've made in five years. It's a great product, but it's not inspirational. It's not something new. It inspires the hell out of me. What? It it does everything that the other one did, with the exception of the screen. And it's small. It costs less. It's the same thing. It costs less than what? Everybody agrees with Robert. That's why I'm arguing with him. Okay, so no, the, just because he's everybody so, agrees with him doesn't mean he's right. So let me let me talk about this. Which you know, do not take stock tips from uh, me about Apple because I sold all mine for for ten bucks in two thousand and three. But um, what's what's happened here is that stocks is where people think it's going. Um, when they're actually the biggest company in the world, it's very hard for them to anywhere to go except down. And so that's that's part of the reflection of this. Part of the, the fact that they had this gigantic market capitalization um, based on this huge this huge flow of profits, um, you know, made a lot of sense. But part of that was everyone replacing their um, dumb phones with smartphones. A lot of that being iPhones. And as as right. everyone's pointed out, they've and been now, taking all the profits. And now what's going to happen? And so the Apple Apple story is we can take this to the rest of the world and keep and, and replace no, all the other phones. No, that's not the story. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's what that's what no, that, was that's saying on the, the thing. That's the We're story. We're really excited about China. No, that's the story that that uh, the market is says is the story. But the real story is that all those and they said this on the uh, earnings call, all those iPhone fours and four S's that they sold at Verizon are gonna are gonna be upgraded to iPhone 6 or whatever it is that's going to come out in the fall. They're going to have a huge, huge sale in the in the fourth quarter of this that, year, calendar year. That is a big assumption. Uh, I Two-thirds, like, I, 50% I like, of the market. I like your thinking, but that doesn't make me go hot and bothered because the I, I don't want to go hot and bothered. I just want to get the... The, the stuff. First of all, all I, I want is the I'm is sorry, the toy. I don't a, care about the market. The 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 mobile phone market is changing, and it's changing very quickly. Oh, right. I'm seeing stuff that's coming out at the end of February at the Mobile World Congress that lets me type way faster, not just a little faster, way faster on other devices than Apple devices. I'm seeing contextual apps coming out that are 
coming out on Android because developers have access to the key to the uh, phone dialer to the calendar system to the contact system to the um, radio Every, everything but an actual channel in which to sell it uh, without it yeah, being fragmented. Come on, man. Android is outselling uh, iPhone six to one. Well, right. Just to, dumb to agree with Robert yes. on this point here, he's right. Six to I mean, one. Google. One. The, the reason that Google stock went up was because they they fi figured out the uh, the search issue and increase the revenues on the search on their on their big thing on mobile right they, that, it, it's not completely you know dominating their revenue or anything everybody's that, starting that's, to figure that's that out that's a signal to the market that that what they're where they're going is the right direction and now they're kind of a growth stock again and apple hasn't done that yet I'm but it's not to say yet. that they're not going to release yeah they are going to they're going to get there they're, they're going to get there they're going to be just fine to your i'm noticing more and more point. influencers every day who are bringing me android devices this is not the Does same it say influencer on your uh, tax returns <laughs> no i'm talking about people who have you know whether you call it high clout score lots of followers uh people who i know what you mean i just uh, i wonder what that <laughs> You know, Trey Ratcliffe running around, a guy Kawasaki. I'm noticing more and more. And when the glasses come, they are going to get the market to start shifting. This Boy, I'm going to stay out of the way when I see somebody with those glasses on. Just, you know, hard to the right. Get off the road until they drive past. They're going to be a danger to glasses, the community. Look down at your phone and be texting and driving. E exactly. That's well, pretty I dangerous always, already. Just just patented patented something similar. What? To the glasses, right? They, they Robert, are. What they just patented? Stuff, the they way. patented something. Uh, I don't know. Last week or two weeks ago, about uh, Who? the ability Apple? to uh, display things on um, through glass. I think, but not glasses, but some some other kind of. Uh, of yeah, uh, they're going to give uh, you know and, uh, and cornea transplants. Device, right? they, 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 it's a very interesting patent. The, the problem is, what does Apple know about me? They know my credit card. They know what apps I use. They don't know my email. They don't know my uh, calendar. They don't know my contacts, uh, and on and on and on. They don't know what I search, and that is leading Google down this Google Now uh, uh, road. And Google Now is getting better and better every couple of weeks. Google's going to be just fine. And so is Apple. So is Apple because they have so much damn money and so much momentum. And like you said, Just a lot of people will buy the Apple product when it comes out. But it's not making me dream anymore. I, I know. Just getting you I to understand. upgrade your iPhone 4 to an iPhone 6 is not making me dream. I already have an iPhone. That's not why iPhone. I'm going to upgrade. Well, I'm going to upgrade anyway because I'm addicted yeah, to it. Yeah, because everybody that... on this show is going to buy a, a new phone this year. Uh, whether it's on Android or, right. or, or you know whatever, I mean, I had my hands. What was on it? The, Verizon. Two thirds of all of the, all sales uh, at, at Verizon were iPhones. Two I believe that thirds. because all the other phones suck. You know, Apple is doing really well in the United States. I like the product. I like the current product, and it's making a crap load of money. That's not the problem. Microsoft made a crap load of money for the last decade. Did we care? Did you go on air saying Office is dead? Office, since you told everybody Office is dead, sold billions of billions of dollars worth. Right, and this thing called the cloud happened, and uh, you yeah, know, and, but it's not and Microsoft hurting pretty badly when, when did because you stop Office being a has dreamer, been dead man? for about. Well, I'm, I'm, I couldn't tell you how excited I am about what's about to happen. I okay. just, uh, you know. What's going to be in the new iPhone that's going to make you dream, make you go, oh, my God, this is so cool? I can't tell you. Yeah. No, I could, <laughs> uh, but I won't. No. Mm -hmm. I, I know Apple employees, and they, and they say they are suffering because they don't have ideas. They're, and they they're... don't know how to compete with Google. <laughs> Apple employees, they they're not compete. scared of anybody anymore since Jobs is gone. Th uh, that they doesn't are mean anything. Scared. They are still very scared and very paranoid. That's why that company is going to be interesting for a long time. But they don't know how to compete with what Google. And I Facebook. finally figured out how to be able to to get you to reveal your innate Apple fanboy status. I am a fanboy. I've been a fanboy since I unboxed an Apple II in 1977. So what you're saying is, is the market is wrong. And I'm staring into you're six thousand right. dollars worth of Apple. You know, it's my I Apple. count on that every every time you come on the show, which is all the time. <laughs> my Apple throne right here. You're a living paradox. There you go. <laughs> no, Global but, living paradox. But, 
the trick is Apple for the last 10 years made me dream every time I, I, you know, and we had lots of signals that they were making, that they were coming out with stuff. I knew the tablet was coming out long before it did. Well, Mike um, Harrington did. No, I had, <laughs> I have friends at Apple who he tell did. Me he invented we're it. working on stuff. Just because Steve Jobs tells them not to tell me anything doesn't mean they don't tell me anything. These guys are, are seriously sucking wind right now. And until they stop sucking wind, that stock is going to settle it down and not, not do very much. You know, they pay people to suck wind so that, so that when they come out with what they're really doing. When, when you study organizational dynamics and when you have 20 smart people in a room who all have... So you're the, saying you dream organizational dynamics? No, I study that. <laughs> That's what I, I go around the world and study organizational dynamics. I spent a day at Stanford this week t studying organizational dynamics and talking to people about this stuff. When you have 20 PhDs in a room who all are rich and who all have FU money, what's called FU money in the Valley, they can't get along and they can't ship. And they don't have somebody willing to take the risk and tell them, you ship. You're right. antisocial. No, Jobs was there to say that idea ships. That idea It's does not, not just Jobs. It is Jobs. No, and the it's lack of not. Jobs has not been replaced at Je Apple yet. The, there is not a strong leader who understands the future. Tim Cook is not a technologist, not a dreamer. Look at his whole career path. This guy does not come up with new ideas and does not paint a new picture for everybody. He makes the trains run on time, same as Sanofsky, actually. So where is going the down dreamer a there. who is going to get the power? Is it Johnny Ives? Yeah. Okay. Why hasn't he fixed the context problem? Why hasn't he What's fixed the context the problem? That, that they don't have data about you. What Are you so serious? This, I'm very serious. What does Apple know about you beyond your app, your location? And they know that no matter what they do, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> no, it's, what it's else do the they need to I'm, know? You're not going to buy it. If, if Google starts, and by the way, I just saw the, the, uh, the new Nexus 4. The fit and finish on Google products is now matching Apple's products. And that's a huge problem. The design and the jankiness is going away very quickly on Google products. And now Google is showing us apps that you can't do with Apple devices like Google Now, like the, the new game Ingress. They're showing us things that are not possible with Apple devices. And if that trend continues, people like me do will Do you think switch. that trend will continue? Absolutely, it will continue until uh, Tim Cook fixes his leadership problem. Right. Do you think he'll fix his leadership problem? He, he better because in two years, if he doesn't, he's out, and then we'll have another cycle. And, it, you know, Apple has enough money. They're going to be important for decades, uh, even if they do everything wrong. You know, I mean, Microsoft did everything wrong for the last 15 years. You sound years. like you did about Microsoft when you were still working for them. I study this stuff. <laughs> That's not I was what I mean. Inside I was inside the Microsoft beast, and I, you know, so you I was right about some stuff and wrong about some stuff. You got to decide which one I'm here. Oh, I, I, okay. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong because I, I actually do want to stay in the Apple ecosystem. I have ten thousand dollars. So you dream to be wrong. Yes, I did. I, I hope that Tim Cook comes up and shows me a, a, a mind-blowing new. Product. I think he, Tim Cook's doing a great job. I He's think doing he, a great job. Okay. You know, he's playing, you know, he's got all the cards and he's playing them and he's doing great. Okay. Let's see if he has his job in three years. Um, yeah, let's. I don't think that, I think that the uh, Steve Jobs role has been distributed throughout the universe. That's the problem. When you I, I don't think that's a problem. I think that the, the, the drive for innovation is now across the board in every direction. And, and that, it does that not require, but at multiple somebody, companies. Yes, well, that, exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. Thank no you, John. No longer is the innovation leader, or, or not the dreamer, not the guy who's making me dream. I don't agree. That is a huge I, problem. You know, no. Steve Jobs well, needed to be Steve Jobs when he invented all this stuff. Now, Steve Jobs he, was he set was, this in motion. Now this is in motion, and the dynamics that you're describing about Google and other companies. 
in relationship to Apple are now driving the innovation curve. It is not gone. There is no Steve Jobs deficit. It, he has become, uh, you know, an, a, a way of life in the technology business, and that's why it's right. growing so rapidly. Right. So th um, there was somebody wrote a good article about Google's design. I can't remember. I read it yesterday or something. But um, th they were talking about suddenly Google has design sense. Um, and there was a sort of weird subtext in this. So, so where's, your, where's your design suprema who's doing this? And, they, and the designers were saying, well, no, we just talk to each other and have a conversation about what works and, and refer to the, 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 the previous designs we've got and which works and which didn't and iterate on those. Um, and that was, that was interesting because the, the sort of, there was a quest for this one person doing thumbs up, thumbs down in the middle that was the, the sort of missing jobs figure. Um, and they, they just couldn't find one at Google. That, that, isn't, there isn't, you know, that isn't what um, Larry or Sergey do. Um, but also, uh, and you, you said Jobs invented this stuff. I think that the, the point is not that he invented it, but that he was the arbiter. The, no, Apple I, has lots of people say, build, build cool stuff. No, I, I, um, and then, then you're he going says, down yeah, the, that's good or, or, or that's bad. You're, you're going down the, the rat hole of saying that, uh, that he wasn't an inventor, that he was a business person. And no, no, not. No, no, no. I'm, Steve I'm Jobs saying, had an understanding and a vision, to use Scoble's a dream, that right. encompassed not just the technology, but the world that would result from that and how that would feed back on itself and create more uh, motion forward. His, you know, iTunes, I hate iTunes as an interface, but it's an engine which is profound. And when it, when it reaches up to the television set, which it will in the next six months, it's going to completely uh, ratify, uh, you know, the vision. I mean, they sold in this earnings report, they sold... Uh, what, 3 million Apple TVs? This is a thing that nobody understands what it does. Nobody cares about it. It's I a hobby, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it, it adds up to real money. It's already added up to real money. And the, and the chain of events that occurs around this kind of content and, you know, what has overturned uh, the media industries. Look at Downton Abbey. Look at uh, House of Cards on Netflix. Look at all of these shows that are coming out that are being produced, like the Seinfeld series, that are being produced for this marketplace, not for big screen television, but for all of these devices, uh, orchestrated together over a protocol, which at the moment is is AirPlay. That's a huge innovation, which is going to dwarf. I mean, you know. Google, talk about Google, they're trying to catch up to AirPlay. That's true. Right. I mean, Google right. TV, the next reports about Google TV is essentially they're going to dumb it down. They're going to stop trying to pass through copyrighted uh, network and, and uh, cartel uh, content and go right, right to the same source that, uh, you know, Google Play is a copy of iTunes. All of these things are based on the jobs innovations i i totally am not disagreeing with any of that but now what i don't know yeah and, but neither do you oh I, I i'm getting some very clear signals now from my research that google is causing the world to dream and has data that apple doesn't have and at google is is bringing out innovations that are predictive and personalized that are beyond what Apple's doing and able to do. And that has got me dreaming about going a different path than I have been for the last eight years. Well, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to your book, but that doesn't mean that uh, it's not a zero-sum game and it's not mutually True. exclusive I mean, I... With, with the Apple Vision. In fact, I think the two drive each other. I don't think it's one or the other. It's one and the other. I think Apple will be forced to, to react. They have not yet. They still are not uh, opening up their, their APIs. They're not to reacting? What, about, what was Maps all about? Um, there was a total a, a reaction. very poor, we need very the data. poor attempt. Duh. By the way, I've been, I've been going through the Maps. Apple Maps, if you try to get to Twitter, takes you the wrong place. If you try to go to... Uh, um, 
all sorts of different places. It takes you bad places. It took <laughs> me to a bad place at Stanford University. Uh, Google Maps are still... Easter eggs of the new uh, age. <laughs> uh, don't even get me started. <laughs> what do you mean, get yeah. you started? You've been doing this for about 40 minutes now. <laughs> if you try to go to Google, it sends you into the, into the lake, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. But, uh, you know... <laughs> Well, the chat room is enjoying this, uh, if you're not. <laughs> they haven't opened up. They haven't ne needed to. They're making so much profit that, you know, they're, um, uh, you know, behaving like a traditional company. This, this happens to every company, right? Why did RIM take eight, uh, six years to react to the iPhone? Because they were making so much money. Because they're and we have a so loser company. And they're gonna no, go... it's not a loser company. They RIM? were a winner company eight years ago. Do you have any RIM stock? Uh, no. I don't have any stock <laughs> anything. <laughs> well, does the hedge fund that you don't have, do, do they have RIM stock? I don't know. I, I know. think they I don't have cleansed money it a while ago. My 401k, when, you know. Nokia reported uh, you know, uh, positive numbers yeah. only until you look beneath the surface. Yeah, but Nokia's stock was at two, and if you, so if you bought it at two, you could you'd have a hundred percent, hundred and fifty percent return. This is <laughs> yeah, a stock show. Rim's gone up. If, if you bought it at the rock bottom. Well, I, I think that it was stubbles. obvious to some of us uh, when the iPhone uh, was announced uh, that Rim was toast, and I've seen nothing to the contrary since. Uh, I saw the new Rim Ten. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah, and so was what was that Web OS? That was pretty good. There's still a a lot of people who there are a lot of people who used to work for Apple who aren't doing very well at other companies. <laughs> I like the BlackBerry Ten. I I'm not going to buy one, but it it <laughs> does bring a few. Right, places. it's the reverse of the, you know, it's too expensive. It's just another, you know, it's just a longer phone. It's blah, blah, blah. I'll take three. No, actually, it has a far superior keyboard to Apple. It has a. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You well, know, I mean, uh, let's talk about it. it hi, it, I'm, I'm. It finish matches Apple's product quality. The speed of it, the UI of it, matches Apple's product quality. Um, you know, it's yeah. just that. that hi, you, I'm Adobe, uh, and Steve Jobs is wrong about Flash, and we're going to continue to develop it. No, they it switched out. their. It's going to be really important. Oh, boops, we're done. It took them six years. <laughs> they did switch. It took them six years. Right, and way too but at late. the time. I think it wasn't six years. It was how many years no, ago? No, Apple it was announced three years ago. Six years ago. Six years ago. I know, but the this flash last, thing was. But the, but the flash transition was completed last year or the year before. It, it was three years. Though, Oops. So. That was loud. Is that you, John? <laughs> I feel better about so, my helicopter now. Jerome asks, uh, "Who's going to get a Surface Pro?" Um, yeah. <laughs> no. No. Oh, you're the one. No, somebody will buy them. I'm not. I, I'm not uh, what was would it? I, uh, Michael Gartenberg uh, recommended it on uh, Twitter. I saw. Yeah, it's a nice machine there. if you need. If you need. He said he recommended it as a. I, I, I hope I'm right about the attribution, but he recommended it uh, if you're going to buy a Windows machine, that that would be the one to buy, and I agree with that. Why? Well, why buy a Windows machine? There's a lot of people who need Excel and PowerPoint. They run on Macs. Outlook, Out, Outlook, Outlook still is better on Windows than it is on the Mac. It's not on the Mac. <laughs> That's not it? saying much. No, there's a, there's a Mac version of of Office. I know it's, it's not supported on, by IT. There are still a lot of people who use Windows and use. I mean, uh, you know, not everybody's like uh, like the. There are a lot software. of people that have you know little phones that uh, are sold by you know everybody, including uh, everybody but Apple. I, so the Gilmore Gang is about the dream of what is next and what is Apple bringing to the table in that dream well, probably sense, about anywhere from 60 to 80 percent market share market share is like of the dream Nokia. of the Freaking dream Frickin'. I'm it's using your Apple. language no it, I move on from market you can't, share. You, I don't care about market share I care what about, about the dream. yes do you not uh, who appreciate. is best who is doing something for me that the other guy can't? And right now, Google Now is far superior to anything I've seen Apple thinking about. And it's getting better every week. Okay. Do you agree with that, John? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been saying that I don't agree with him. I thought I'd 
distribute you, this around. You know, a if bit. you don't agree, you you haven't used Google now. I go, I like Google exactly. I mean, you know that I've been talking about Google for over you know. Yeah, I think since I've been on the Nexus Google Seven game. is fantastic. <laughs> what do you want me to say? The Nexus Seven uh, is like wonderful. This I haven't used I, it since this. It sits. I don't even charge it anymore. It just sits there. I do charge it because I like I, I like Google now. That's one thing that keeps me uh, using. Uh, right, just, and yeah. I've got my Vanity yeah. Fair. But you know, come on. They're all great devices, and and they, interesting things that happen in the ecosystem um, that are not in the ecosystem. I mean, are 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 fascinating too. Amazon, and uh, you know, they're uh, you know downloading their videos or whatever. You know, they're everything's changing. You know that you're what's happening, and um, and it's driven by this Apple Google, you know, battle, and Twitter and is in there too. And it's just changing the way we're Facebook. consuming entertainment. It's not just consuming it; it's uh, collaborating around it. It's it's doing I get all, all that. That's what things. Steve Jobs did. So I, I really get bored ago. with the, you know, Apple is better or Google is better because they're they're all going to be better at one point or another. And well, it's I keep I haven't up been until saying that Apple is better. You know, I've been saying, domination. I haven't said that Apple is better. I've said that uh, that the noise around the death of Apple is uh, exaggerated. Apple is hardly dead right now. They have $120 yeah, but, billion dollars in the bank, you know, and they have a stock price that... Well, they lost $52 billion in market cap yesterday. $200 billion. 200 billion. Yesterday, $52 billion. Oh, okay. Two, yeah. yeah. Yesterday, they've lost. Right. So that, over the last that is months, real money. they've lost $200 billion in, well, so in value, in stock market value. That does so have they, a, the, the impact they combine of themselves with cash. the workforce, but you know, if they're, if they're well run and the train is on time, then, then they'll just bounce right back. That, I uh, that. So I, I don't know. Be it's, careful it's about the train to call running Apple, on time. You know, a uh, a loser <laughs> company right now. No, it's it's about we started riskier talking than about stock calling Rim a loser company. Where the stock price is going until Apple makes us dream again, the stock is going to be flat. Do you think that Rim uh, will be sold within the next six months? Yes, yes. or no? Okay. Yes, Kevin. Um, I'm not sure who who'd want to buy it unless they want patents. Let Lenovo Good is. Answer. is uh, the latest current rumor on top of well, that, that would be the way for Microsoft to get you know twenty percent share would be to buy up all the losers. Yeah, Microsoft may may buy Rim and may buy Nokia. I think Microsoft has been evaluating Rim for five years. That's and, right. And why haven't they bought it yet? You know, because, because they, they don't need it. Yet, there's something they didn't have much for them. They're Rim. waiting for it to go to like you know five percent of its value. Yeah, but the problem is it's doubled in price in the last three months. It, what Microsoft's strategy would be with, with RIM would be to in, inject, you know, fifty million or a hundred million dollars into the company to get it some, uh, you know, Windows eight based uh, machines in it that are that are RIM based, yeah, and then the I have strategy. access to it's the patents. They... That Microsoft strategy would not be to buy it. I don't think at this time because they must have they would have already considered that in the past. Right. The stra Microsoft strategy is to announce that they're trying to acquire Yahoo and then drive it into the toilet. Well, <laughs> the, Which if it wasn't for Jerry Yang, they would have had <laughs> Yahoo <laughs> and then driven it into the toilet. Right, well, it, <laughs> the dog didn't catch the truck that, at that point. That, you know, I'm sure Steve, Steve Ballmer wakes up every morning going, thank you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that uh, they d did a very effective job of waiting for a really bad earnings call and then stepping on their neck. Whatever. <laughs> I, I, Speaking I'm of uh, six, six months, do you think I'm going back to who is going to bring the product to market this year that gets us to dream, and I am betting it is Google. And what's that going to be? I am not hearing that what Apple is, is prepared to bring a mind-blowing new product to market. What's and the what is the market? Uh, what's the product that Google's going to bring in the, in this year? Uh, Google Glasses. Google Glasses combined with a new OS that is going to be a lot better on Android. It already is getting better. They got rid of the jankiness, all the things I hated about Android. I finally less jankiness. Them. That's the, uh, the no. That the was pitch. last year's message with the Butter Team, right? That came from I Apple. Thought, by the way, like I said, the Nexus Seven is fantastic. Yep, and the Nexus Seven is crappy hardware. So, you know, so less jankiness, crappy hardware. And what is the rest of your dream? Mm. Predictive and personalized product. 
Uh, Google and nobody that is out. and nobody sees that coming. Nobody except sees that coming. Google. No, they all see it coming. Who has the data to make a personalized and product pers and uh, predictive product? Well, Facebook has the data. Facebook has a lot of data, and Facebook is working on something. Yes. Uh huh. But they don't work on. They're not working on hardware. Every you know, Arrington keeps going down that rat hole. They're not working on hardware. Why would Why would Facebook work on hardware? Facebook is a potential partner for a lot of hardware companies. And so, if you told me that Tim Cook is gonna make a huge deal with uh, Facebook, that'll get me to dream. That'll that'll get me to turn out to be wrong about this year. So that is a wild card. What else is a wild card? I don't know. Let's. Let, I don't know of many. Kevin, you guess. Um, well, yeah. What are the other, yeah, the other wild cards is is things you haven't seen yet that pop out of nowhere. That's a, that's the big one. Um, like, like what? I you know historically I, CES, has that been true that at things CES, that pop out of nowhere. People, I met with people who are building stuff with the new weird Texas Instruments uh, engines. I met people who are doing three D sensor technology and talked with them. I know what's on the marketplace that's possible and S Samsung has a lot of stuff that's in the labs that's coming out shortly what does Apple have that nobody is expecting to see that's maybe you're right maybe they have something that's so mind-blowing that you know a 3d sensor that's built into a phone that gets me to go whoa hmm. they they have that put potential but I'm hearing that they don't have it internally yet they don't have it uh, Locked up, and they don't own the patents, by the way, on that. So, Kevin, hmm. what do you think? Uh, you said well, something uh, unexpected happening. Well, it, but it, something unexpected will happen. But give me a percentage on that. Chance of something unexpected happening from a an unexpected source. I think that's 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 very high. I think that's that you know, and it it will it's be. It's going to have a material effect on on Scoble's dream patterns this year. Yeah, ten yeah, percent. Twenty-five percent, I'd say. Twenty-five percent. Okay, uh, John. I like those odds. Unexpected. If I, if I was in Vegas, I'd live with those odds. Yeah, unexpected. Uh, unexpected source. Unexpected has impact on Scoble's dreams this year. Percentage. No, there's nothing unexpected that's going to happen this year. <laughs> I mean, if anything Zero, happens, right? <laughs> it would be. Uh, it would be something around the uh, the airwaves. I always start with the carriers as the uh, creation, uh, uh, the innovation engine behind uh, new devices now. And so, if the carriers get some broader spectrum around LTE, then then you have a lot of really interesting things that are happening. But right now, like things like the Hopper are what's winning CES, and the, and the Hopper was you know something that was invented, oh. you know, years ago. Well, CES was, was... It actually formed the basis of the movie Contact with the aliens and stuff, how the guy got rich. I mean, it just, it just existed. And CES so was I don't see devoid. anything happen unless there's a big LTE push. Okay, CES so was 2%? devoid of any innovation other than the 3D sensors and some of the uh, wearable computing. But uh, devoid yeah, I haven't of got. Innovation. I haven't asked you this question yet. I'm asking John right now. Yeah. What's the percentage possibility... <laughs> The percentage, what is it? What's the, percentage the percentage likelihood of, of something coming from an unexpected source this year that will have a material effect on Robert Scoble's dreams? <laughs> a zero percent. Okay. You said that. I, I, I was trying to give Make you it the 1%? opportunity. Make it one percent? One percent. Two percent is what I was <laughs> yeah. suggesting. Um, no, there, I guess there's always a, a slight chance. It's just, I mean, Scoble's in touch with a lot of things. How, what would surprise him? I'm not afraid Nothing. of that. Okay, Scoble, what's the chance of something unexpected? So you have to rule out all the things that you think I, you know. I'd say 10, 10%. 10%. I think that's right. I go with Scoble's number. You're saying there's 10% chance that something unexpected is going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, there's always a... a, a <laughs> that's, that's, just 90, that's like saying there's a 10% out, chance out, it's, it's going to rain tomorrow. I, it I either is or it yes. isn't. Wait. No. I saw at CES a guy who built a pair of glasses that has two 1080p cameras in it and a little TI chip that lets me stream. Let me talk. That let me stream video for an hour and a half. He built that in his house. Okay, so there is always a chance that something is going to come out of lab somewhere that's going to be unexpected. But I am not seeing any signal that I usually am hearing 
of Apple coming out with such a device this year. Long before the iPhone came out, we heard signal that we should be at that Your announcement. How did, Long you, how did this go back to being about Apple? Uh, well, unexpected about Apple. source. Yeah. What's the percentage? You said ten oh, percent. I agreed 10%. with you. I think the show should be called Ten Percent Chance." Of I rain. think so too. I think that we should have a <laughs> a, a rating that we publish, which is live on the web. Ten percent just means you don't know what the hell's going on. No, it on. means oh, ninety percent chance like of nothing like happen. that happening. And so no, you're going to hedge your bet just a little bit. It's ninety percent be... possibility uh, that nothing is going to change. Then there make will, it forty percent. I totally agree. There with. will be at no, the, that's not enough. At the Mobile World Congress in a month, at the end of February, there will be at least two phones that get us to talk on the Gilmore Gang. Is well, that what Sonic it won't be me talking about it. But that it. might be, be you just a thin, about fast, really cool phone. Well, I, you, you can know. make that prediction come true because you'll start talking about it. So what does that mean? It's no, 100% I, chance I, that you're going to start talking about it. I those. have inside sources. So <laughs> <laughs> it's already true. I don't need to make it true. You've already it's already going to gonna be true. <laughs> you know? But having an effect... Uh, on your dreams. Uh, that's not unexpected, though, because I already expect those two things that's to happen. That's my. I was trying to rule and, that out. That's why yeah. we're at ten percent. And that's by the way, that doesn't get me to dream just because I'm going to get a fast, you know, thin, high high def phone. Bingo. Oh, that's that's bingo. Not now you're starting to, to now you're starting to prove my point. The the stuff that's getting me to dream is this contextual stuff, and I'm seeing lots of things that are getting me to go. Wow, I I might have to give up my Apple fanboy card. And I am getting very close to doing that. And I think by the end of February, you're going to know whether I do that or not. Oh. Uh, you know, I'd be willing to bet Chances you. Chances are up. Uh, uh, I'll bet you 100 bucks that you don't give up your fanboy card. Chances are about 70% right now. So there's 30% chance I won't give, give up my Apple fanboy card. I'm willing to bet you that at the oh end of God. the show where we discuss this in February, at the end of February, that you will not be giving up your fanboy card. You will be hedging your bet like you always do. I saw something this morning that um, makes me think I'm going to give up my Apple fanboy card. So, yeah. Okay, so write it down, put it in an envelope, seal no, the envelope. No, it's not It's going to be on TechCrunch tomorrow. <laughs> I don't need to write anything down. Google will have it in a, in a 15 seconds, right? <laughs> so. No, I said write it down and put it in an envelope. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Meet you space. At the end of February. I want to I... see the prediction, you know, on a piece of paper that you write down, lick it and seal it. You can put the Fritos in there too. <laughs> okay. I think we've beaten this horse almost to death. But it still now seems, it's according to the chat room, now. <laughs> they seem to have unlimited because see Murray McDonald comes in and says there's a seventy cent seventy percent chance, so all the uh, Android <laughs> fanboys are, are up here on the on the uh, on the meter. Okay. Uh, oh wait, wait. Murray just said something that we have to take on. He said it, it's amazing that Google gets all the glasses hype when Musix uh, already makes Android glasses. There, there's a big difference between what Musix does and what Google's doing, and it's uh, it's a new kind of um, uh, control surface. Uh, Musix does not have the data and does not have the patents on this new kind of control that Google Glasses have. And so, when when we get all hot and bothered by Google, there's something behind it that Musix does not have. And also, uh, Google is Google. It's a big company. It has the ability to get, you know, people to hear about these things. Musix is a brand that is not going to threaten Google anytime. Google's soon. strength is the combinations of all of its technologies, and yeah. not any one of them. Here, Murray's asking me to yeah. laugh. The pitch for the Google Glasses, the code name for it was Wingman. And the pitch was to, to have Nick Dotra hold a laser pointer in his hand and ho hold a pointer on a target across the room. Your hand is not very good at doing that. Uh, the eye-hand coordination is not very good. Um, when you put a laser pointer on your glasses, you can hold that pointer for hours on that dot uh, because we have 100 million years of evolution in our head to, uh, to 
basically uh, steady cam our eyes. And so there's a new UI that uses that pointer to do things. And so I can answer email or take a photo just by doing a, a flick of my head. And that's a new thing that Musics does not have, nobody else has yet. And then you add in the contextual stuff. Uh, i.e. looking in your email, looking in your calendar, looking in your search behavior, and you can get predictive. The stuff I saw this morning is all about getting predictive with your behavior to do things without touching a keyboard. And that's where the, the and future And you're going to get the mother of all migraines as a result. No! Nope. We do this all day long, right? If you, you know, no, I don't want a Big Mac. I want a quarter pounder with cheese. You know, this this is huh? our heads were built for this. <laughs> you you did it right there, huh? You moved your head. Did you get a headache because you moved your head a little bit? No. <laughs> no, but what if I had tried to direct it at anything? This is, you know, I can be Stevie Wonder all day, but if <laughs> I have to go like like that, my head's already aching from yeah, we'll the, see. The, the just the anticipation of how shitty that's going to we'll be. We'll see. That's version one. Uh, when I was at Oakley, they said version two is not just going to have a front-facing camera, but it's going to have a camera aimed at your eyeball. So now you have two control surfaces, the head and the eye, and you can do even more with that. So, yeah. Curtis says, we don't know the health implications. Do we care? I don't. <laughs> no. When, when, if you showed me the car, it's if a we dream, go back baby. 100, I don't care about no, the reality. No, we had Gilmore Gang a hundred years ago, and and the guys at Mercedes came on the show and showed us the new uh, the new automobile. Would we care that forty thousand people are going to die in that thing a year? No, we want one. How many people died to give me my mini? Not many. Ah, uh, there's people who've died walking <laughs> across the street, looking into their iPad mini. I guarantee it. <laughs> Yes. In New York, they have a, a rule against looking at a device That's Darwin. And That's different. while walking, by the way, because you they've had several people who walk along a sidewalk and fall into a sewer hole. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I uh, see that reading books, sir. Let's, let's wind this up. I'll start with uh, Kevin Marks. Uh, you can change the subject. You can ratify everything that I've said, or <laughs> you can agree with Scoble. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I I agree with bits of Scoble. I think I think he's he's right that the um, eye tracking, head tracking stuff is going to be interesting, um, but it's going to give us a whole new set of problems, um, which we'll, we'll get used to. The um, I still think that the, you know something is going to come out that, that we weren't expecting because something always does. That that's what I was getting at, um, and we may not recognize and we, we may not recognize it's a big thing until it already come, it, it becomes a big thing. That's you know that that's the that's the nature of, of technology. John Tashek. I'll agree with that last point by uh, Kevin. Um, you don't know. Nothing, nothing's going to shock us this year until we look back on it. It's like watching a, a Woody Allen movie. It's not funny when you see it anymore, but when you talk about it, it's still funny. Um, you know, the, uh, not the good ones. Well, like Annie Hall's still funny. Things like that. But uh, uh, I don't know. I just uh, I think this is a year of uh, kind of um, everyone is uh, is executing on a vision that was created a while ago, and yeah. we'll see iterations. I find that very exciting myself. Uh, By the way, I, at Stanford, I did see some uh, shocking things. You can now uh, sequence uh, DNA strand uh, very inexpensively. That was pretty pretty shocking, uh, and will have deep implications for. A, human beings for decades to come. Yeah, in the healthcare field, there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, and there's a lot of, they're now getting so cheap at doing DNA research that they're playing games online and then building the DNA strands in the, in the labs. And uh, it's uh, far cheaper to do that science than the other science I saw at Slack, where they have a half billion dollar uh, laser that pulses out uh, X-ray X-rays, and they can study the movement of electrons around materials, and therefore they're going to find a new way to build processors for us and uh, memories and all sorts of stuff. That was that's pretty mind blowing to see, and I'll have a video up next next week about that. Um, I think I saw that on Total Recall. It's 
you know, it's if you drive across uh, that long building uh, on 280, you know, the the slack. Um, it used to be a um, a particle accelerator, and now uh, they're building. They built a X-ray machine that's about a half billion dollars, and it's uh, pretty damn cool. <laughs> it's really cool to go and see that. Um, hmm. What was the question, Steve? Um, are you right or are you wrong? We'll see. I, I I'm my my uh, confidence of being right is going up every time I see something new. <laughs> okay, so see uh, you at the end of February. <laughs> And then we'll see you in before. June. Well, the end of February is when the next cycle is of, of mobile devices. That's where the Mobile World Congress is, and that's where Samsung and LG and it's Google. It's where everybody except Apple. Everybody except Apple, and then we'll right. see you in June because Apple will have something on the market, and we'll see if it, um, you know, if it comes up to what I expect, which is not going to be all that exciting, or if it, it is truly mind blowing, and I'm just not hearing the right signals from Apple. So. Well, I Let's see. I, I'm with uh, Tasha basically that uh, this is a, a period of consolidation and of uh, uh, rapid innovation on the platform that Steve Jobs largely triggered. So I think that that's going to account for a tremendous upside for Apple for many years to come. Uh, I think Google, it will also be a tremendous upside for Google. And the two will drive each other. And the question in my mind is whether uh, Microsoft uh, can turn around its inability to be able to capitalize on its enormous cash reserves and, uh, and current revenue before uh, it dissipates, which I believe it is dissipating. Uh, this has been the Gilmore Gang. I want to thank uh, Rackspace. Robert's company, and particularly Rob Lejess, without which this show would not have uh, returned from wherever it had gone. Uh, I want to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster for turning this into video. I want to thank uh, Kevin Marks. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Robert Scoble. What's up? My focus isn't working anymore. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Yeah, it's being recalibrated uh, for, the, <laughs> for your dreams. That looked more like a dream than a reality. And uh, John Toshek, thank you, John. Thank you, Steve. And uh, our producer and director is Tina Chase Gilmore. She's doing her usual fantastic job. And uh, the chat room has been uh, uh, very active today and uh, very enjoyable to read. Uh, I always like these uh, four-person shows because they they give us enough time to breathe, and uh, I have to do less traffic copying in, in order to be able to get uh, everybody in. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Keith Tiered coming back and showing us his new uh, application, which he's uh, just going to debate it with, just not me. Uh, that sounds interesting to me. And uh, I can't wait to get back to my uh, iPad Mini. So I'll see you again next time. Thanks for uh, watching. Bye-bye. See you.